Black in love. Yeah, Black you know what I was love. thinking about you and me the other day. You know, that time Black I saw you, love. you know, we were walking down the street. You Black didn't see me, but love. I saw you, and I knew you were thinking about me. Though, because Black I called you in love. Love. Oh, oh, and I pulled Black up the side of my You know, and I waved my hand Black at you, and you smiled at me, and I smiled back. You know, we was holding hands, you know, not physically, but you know, on a mental Black level. That's what I'm thinking love. about. You know, we Hello, welcome to the show. How are you doing? My name is Leon Phelps, and this is Black in Love. And today we have one lovely lady here who we're going to interview by the name of Caitlin Johnson. Caitlin, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Great. Welcome to the show. Excited? Good. You're not nervous, are you? I guess. Maybe. I'll take that as a yes, folks. <laughs> she doesn't do well in front of the camera, it seems. Well, we have a couple of questions we're going to ask you today. So, I hear that you are engaged. Yes. Yes. And uh, who is this lovely gentleman? His name is Christopher Badgew. Oh, he sounds like a nice guy. Hmm. I bet he's handsome. Yeah, very dapper oh, and handsome. Okay, yes. good. Well, like I said, we do have some questions because we're going to find out what, how y'all met, some of the questions and stuff like that. But first, the first question we're, we're going to ask you actually is on that subject. So tell me, Caitlin, how did you and Chris meet? We met at a function, karaoke. <clears throat> Ah, uh, karaoke. Yes. Something we both love to do is sing. I love karaoke too. I don't mind making you happy. And it was a group of witnesses from different congregations there. And that was my first encounter with Chris. Mm. Okay. Good. So, you're a pretty good singer? Yeah, I can. I can sing, but I can't sing. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's good. Good. Karaoke sounds fun. Okay, so next question. Um, who is it that made the first move? Well, I would have to say it was Christopher because I was so shy and nervous about even talking to him when we were at the karaoke place. And he was the one who made the first move because I do recall him sending me a message on Facebook and he complimented me on my singing abilities. And he suggested a song for me by Aaliyah. And I ended up suggesting him a song too. And that's how we first sparked our first initial spark. Okay, interesting. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so a little fun in karaoke. No, no problem. All right, so uh, what do you say attracted you to him? Well, for one, I love to laugh. He is hilarious. He makes me laugh all the time and both of us are big kids at heart so that's one thing and the fact that he's a big kid at heart and he has a big heart he's very loving very respectful and just watching him amongst all the people when we we're in groups seeing how he interacted with people he was a very well liked person and he was very respectful, not only to people who were just friends, but also his family. So those were a few things that attracted me to Chris. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. So <clears throat> when did it occur to you that things were getting serious? Well, it occurred to me when we started talking more, because off of that first time we talk to each other when we were picking songs out for each other every time we would go to karaoke on a Sunday. We would talk a little bit throughout the week. But then eventually we started talking more and more and we started to see that we had so much more things in common. And from that day, it was just like, we couldn't stop talking to each other, like nonstop. If I could talk to him for 24 hours, I would, but I gotta go to work and stuff. So that does get in the way. <laughs> 
Well, I guess that's what happens when people are in love. So I understand that. And the one question that we all would love to know is obviously the things got serious. So mm -hmm. how did he propose? It was awesome. I'm a foodie. He's a foodie. And we went to this restaurant called Trips. I had never been there. I lived in Virginia all my life. Never been. He told me about it one day, him, his, um, him and his mom and dad and one of the brothers and sisters from my hall went there and they were just talking about how great the food was. So I was like, I wanna go. And he was like, okay, we can go on a Sunday or a Friday. You just tell some of your friends and I'll tell some of my friends, it seemed normal. That's how we always would do it when we would go out to eat. And that day was so crazy. I went to work thinking I would get off at seven so I could be there by eight o'clock. That didn't happen. I got off at 8.30. And by the time I got my daughter, it was probably like nine something, I wanna say. But by the time I got to trips, it was 9.45. Everybody was still there. Me, my brother, and my daughter, we all came in there, sat down. Oh yeah, my niece was there too, cause my brother was babysitting. Crazy night. And we got our food, we ate, and then we sat around a little bit, talked to everybody, and then out of nowhere, the waitress comes with a piece of cake. Cheesecake. Mm -hmm. It was delicious. Cheesecake. What flavor? Strawberry. Ooh. And it had chocolate mm. letters that said, will you marry me on the plate? Oh, how romantic. Will you marry me? Wow. That sounds like it was. So what happened after that? When, I mean, the initial response when she brought the plate, what was your reaction? I was in awe. I felt like the whole world just stood still. And I didn't quite hear everything that he was saying to me, but the part about, will you marry me, stood out the most. I heard him say that he loves me and he wanted to spend the rest of his life with me. But I was just like feeling like I was in a dream and that it really wasn't happening, but I was just like really, really excited. And I was trying to cry, but when I wiped my tears, I guess some of the juices from the food I was eating kind of got in my eye. So it kind of burned, it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was. That's great. Well, it sounds like he's a pretty nice guy and I'm happy for you. I hope you, uh, uh, much success in your marriage to come and hope everything works out well well folks that's it thank you for for viewing black in love and what we actually have another person in view we're actually going to interview her fiance and my associate actually is going to do that so that's enough of me folks have a good one hi i'm alexa o'neill we are in the second segment of black in love and i'm here to interview christopher badju how are you doing Mr. Badgie. I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm doing pretty fine. Are you ready for this wonderful interview we have? To knock it out the park. All right. Sounds pretty confident. You yeah. must know your fiance very well. Very. Let's see how well you know her and how you met. I didn't know this was a newlywed game. <laughs> well, how did you and your fiance <clears throat> first meet? Oh, I remember it like it was yesterday. We actually met at karaoke. No way! Um, I remember we walked in the first time the karaoke, I saw her, but, you know, just, hey, how you doing? You know, everybody was doing their thing. The man, all the women were on me. And it wasn't until some time later that um <clears throat> we actually interacted with each other and um you know we all like to sing so we were there pretty frequent every sunday actually so who made the first move um you know it's an interesting question because um i think she did she's gonna say it was me i know she is but uh, she said that um i did I don't remember that. Right. So, what attracted you mm. to her? Well, 
I remember uh, speaking to her, uh, getting to know her, and just the type of person she was. I can tell she had a good heart. She was a, a, a great person down to earth. Um, she loved her family, people person, uh, very sociable. She loved Jehovah. I can see that, that's evident. Um, the way she carries herself, um, very sophisticated. Um, and just knowing her, um, and we all have gone through a lot of things, just seeing how strong she was or, and is, um, all of that. And that's what I love about her. Aww. Yeah. Okay, Jay. Okay. So when did things <clears throat> start to get more serious for you all? You know, uh, to be specific, I think it was after the district convention. Because we, we were talking the first couple months, and then it wasn't until after the district convention. Because nobody knew we were talking. We kind of kept it, you know, to ourselves. And I think we started telling people some months out. Well, actually, I think it was the beginning right before the district convention. So from that point on is when everybody started finding out about us. And the big question that we are all waiting for is how did you propose to her? How did I propose? You know, it's interesting you ask that because for weeks I was going back and forth in my head asking myself that same question because I wanted to be different, you know, original. You know, I, I didn't want to do it like how everybody else does it. So I would go in, I was going back and forth, back and forth in my head, like, all right, well, I can do it this way. I can do it that way. What about this? And it was just so many ideas and I didn't know how I was going to do it. I knew I was going to do it, but didn't know how. And actually, initially, the way I was supposed to do it ended up changing. I actually, because we both love karaoke, what I was going to do was we were, I was going to go to a karaoke bar and we were going to get up there and sing, um, Avant and, uh, Kiki, Wyatt, nothing in this world. Because at the end of the song, um, I think he, he breaks it down where he's saying something like, I think it's about time I should uh, let you know, blah, 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 blah. And then toward the end of the song, he was like, forever is what I want to give to you. So what do you say? And then she's like, baby, I do. So on that part, when I said that, then I was going to get on my knee and pull the ring out and do it like that. I thought it was different, was but it didn't work out that way. So we uh, went to dinner and, uh, went to trips and has some of our friends there and uh she got there pretty late but i don't blame her i know she had a lot of things that she had to get done before she got there so we got she got there finally and uh everybody was eating we were done and um i signaled the waitress because when I, I first got there i was like all right well this is what i want to do um i want to get dessert whatever you have maybe it's, you know i saw they had cheesecake so i was like is there a way you can drizzle will you marry me on the plate you know and she was like oh yeah we can do that and i was like, all right cool so i was like i'm gonna signal you you know after everybody's done eating and then you know you, you could bring it to the table and just put it in front of her so she was like okay just let me know so that's how it worked that's how it happened and um she brought the plate put it in front of her and <clears throat> she looked down and she just turned and looked at me and she was just like and then that's when I took the ring out and I, I turned to her and I told her how much I loved her and uh, I said that I don't see myself you know I can't see myself with anybody else and I can spend the rest of my life with her and asked her if she could marry me and she said yes and that was it and there we are, another heartwarming story brought to you by yours truly, Black Love. 
Thank you, Christopher, for doing such a great job. Not a problem. It was from the heart. It wasn't, it wasn't scripted. That's the best way. Speak from the heart. And we are out of here. Black in love. Yeah, Black you know what? I was thinking love. about shooting at me the other day. You know, that time Black I saw you. Love. You were walking down the street. And you Black didn't see me, but I saw you. And I knew you were thinking about me. Black in love. And I pulled up beside you. I waved my hand at you and you smiled at me and I smiled back and you know, we was holding hands, you know, not physically, but, you know, on a mental level, that's what I'm thinking about, you know, together, you know, forever, let's talk about it.